Okay, so today I want to write a program called CAT. So CAT on Unix and Linux is a program that is able to concatenate text files together. Now, um, a lot of times what CAT is used for is to just um, print a file to standard out. Uh, that's usually not the best use of CAT, but uh, we're actually gonna kind of create that version today. So we're gonna create a simplified version of CAT, which just uh, prints a file to standard out. And so we'll go ahead and open up a file. So phasmd cat. Now I've already created, oh wait, this is, this is, um, let's not save that. Uh, phasmd cat asm. Okay, so I created this template here, uh, basically copied from our um, previous program that had string length and uh, we've got some of the same stuff. So I'll run through the template and then we'll, uh, then we'll get started on writing the program. So this is just uh, format MZ, so we're gonna have an executable. This tells us where our entry is, our stack. Uh, these pieces, um, these labels here are actually give us the offset from what's called the program segment prefix or PSP. The program segment prefix is something that is filled out uh, upon the execution of any process. And one of the pieces of data that it has is the command line arguments. Now the command line arguments are not parsed. Uh, it's just a raw string uh, that you can access uh, at an offset. And these uh, labels allow us to give us the offset that we want. Uh, we're going to read and write to um, a buffer uh, or at least uh, read and write from a buffer. And the buffer size I chose was just 1,024 bytes. That seems kind of nice, uh, one kilobyte. We've got our main segment like we had before, and uh, of course our starting label. Uh, now the first thing that we've got to do in this program is uh, set our DX uh, to the address of our command line argument string. And then the other thing that we've got to do is increment that address by one. And the reason for this is to essentially skip a space. Because if you think about when you call a program on the command line or the console, you've got essentially the uh, program name, and then you've got, um, well, you've got the program name, then you've got a space, then you've got all your command line arguments. And so what we want to do is uh, this, um, this index actually gives us the start of the string where the command line arguments start. And so what we're going to do is increment that address by one so we can skip that first space. So very simple. The other thing that I've done here is I've created a little bit of pseudocode uh, about the things that we want to accomplish in this program. So we want to be able to open a file, read a file, and then uh, write to a buffer, and then close the file. And of course, we've got our standard exit uh, of a program. And then of course, at the bottom here, we've got this uh, text segment, uh, which just has one item, a buffer. And so we've reserved bytes of buff size, which is 1,024. So that is the uh, essentially the template of the program that we wanna do. So we can start uh, writing our program and uh, what we need to do is we need to be able to open a file. And so to do that, we're gonna actually take a look over here. Now let's see, I wonder if one of these things, I've got close, read. I wonder if I have open here somewhere, right? Open existing file, here we go. So uh, we'll just make this a bit bigger so everyone can see. So uh, we can open existing file, we set age to 3D. Uh, and this, uh, a, the lower half of the AX register has the sharing mode, which you can take a look at at this link here, but we just want zero. And then we've got DSDX, which is the ASCII Z file name. Now ASCII Z is just an ASCII string that's terminated by a zero, just like it is in Unix or Linux. And of course you can set this attribute mask file, but that's for server calls only, so we, we don't care about this. Now, uh, when you open a file, it, it, the AX register will actually have the file handle. Uh, and then of course there's error codes that can be set. Uh, but for simplicity today, we're not going to handle any errors. So let's go back to our program. 
and we're going to go ahead and implement this. So we're going to uh, set the AH. So move uh, AX in, and that needs to be 3D. OX 3D 00. And this will be, what is this? Open file. And then, of course, we need to set um, a DSDX. So move into DX. Uh, um, actually, let's see, DX already has, uh, if you think about it, DX already has the string that we want. So we can just do int uh, ox21 uh, syscall, and that will open our file. So that's great. So now we've got our file opened. Uh, now we want to be able to read the file, right? So let's go back to our browser here and take a look at reading a file. So we've got close a file here. We've got read a file. So to read a file, we set age to 3f, uh, bx to the file handle, um, cx the number of bytes to read, and dsdx is the buffer for the data. And then, of course, ax returns the number of bytes actually read. So if we go back to our code here, we can do this. So uh, remember, ax has our file handle so far. And so we need to actually move uh, into, was it bx, ax. So this will be the file handle. And then we have, um, now we can set ax, uh, which is going to be, was it, ox, uh, 3x. F O O. This will be read file, and then we have C X. Whoops, C X, and we'll have buff size, right? So this will be the num bytes to read. Then we can call uh, n twenty one, which is the syscall, and that will read our file. Uh, so that's great. But now let's see, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, there's one other thing that we need to do because if you think about it, um, uh, the, oh, DX uh, needs to be set here. So move DX and we need to have buff, buffer. Now, the thing that you have to think about is the buffer here is actually in the text segment, right? And our segment address is actually set to main. So our current DS uh, uh, data segment register is set to main and we need to set it to here. Otherwise, we won't be able to see the buffer. So in order to do this, we'll just move into AX uh, the text segment, um, segment. And then move into DS, the data segment, it needs to be AX. Um, DS register. So now uh, when it reads this buffer, it actually knows the right place to see it. All right, so that allows us to read the file. Now, the, the file could be bigger than 1,024 bytes. And uh, right now we can only read 1,024 bytes uh, if we, because we're reading once. But what we can do here is we can, we can actually do this, uh, all of this thing in a loop. Um, so that's exactly what we want to do is we want to set up this loop. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Whoops, uh, here we go. And we're going to say loop. So we've got a nice little label here. And uh, what we can do is we've got BX, let's see, uh, read file. And then of course, after uh, AX, um, AX will actually have the number of bytes that is read after this syscall. And BX is the file handle. Um, so now what we can do after reading the file is we want to write it to a buffer. So let's take a look at our browser uh, to see how we write to a buffer. So if we go over here, this is close, this is read, this is open, and this is write. So write needs to set 40H, BX needs to have the file handle, CX the number of bytes to write, and DSDX the data to write. And of course, AX returns the number of bytes actually written. So if we go back to our program, 
we can do this. So if we say, uh, we're going to write to a buffer. Um, so move into a x, um, o x 40 there, right? And then we need to set bx as the file handle. Now the thing is, is the file handle that we want to write to is stood out, right? And bx currently has our file handle, which is the file we're reading from. And we may not be done reading from that file, so we, we want to keep that value around. So what we're going to do is we're going to save bx, save file handle. Then we can move into bx um, uh, the uh, stood out, right? So stood in, I believe, is 0, stood out is 1, and stood error is 2. So here we have stood out. OK. So now what we can do is we've got bx, which is set. Um, we need to move uh, cx, which is the number of bytes to write. Um, now, uh, this is interesting because the number of bytes to write was actually, um, let's see, read was what we read here. So ax was the number of bytes that we read. So let's actually move that into cx over here. Bytes to write. There we go because notice here that we're using AX, right? So we might as well set the CX from AX over here. And then what we can do is uh, call it, uh, so LX21, uh, syscall, and that will write to stood out, right? Okay, now we need to have a condition that we check after we've done this syscall. We need to check uh, and see if we're done writing. So if, um, if we've read, if the buffer was completely full, then we should probably still try to read again. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to compare AX to buff size. Compare uh, AX to buff size. OK. And we're going to jump if 0 to loop. Um, so basically, if, if our buffer was full, we will loop back around and try to read it, read again. We'll either read zero bytes or we'll read some less than uh, the total buffer size, or we might read a full buffer again, depending on how big the file is. So this will allow us to read, read as many times, read and write as many times as we need. So this is great. Uh, now let's see, what we need to do after this is we need to close. So after we escape the loop, we need to close the file. And so we can look that up. Let's see, open file, read, close file. So we set AH, uh, let's see, actually, let, let me show you this. So let's go here. So we set AH to 3E and then BX to the file handle, which is great. So let's go back to our program. And we'll do exactly this. So we'll move into AX. Uh, let's see, OX, was it 3E? 3E, O, um, close file. And then we're going to say uh, move, uh, let's see, into, let's see, BX is the file handle, which the file handle, let's see, stood out. Say file handle, oh, back up here. After we've done this syscall, we need to pop bx, restore file handle. There we go. And then, of course, the file handle will already be set, which is great. And then we can call int ox21 um, uh, syscall. OK. And then, of course, we've got our normal exit, which is good. and as long as we haven't made any errors, our program really should be complete. So we can go phasm cat asm. So it compiled properly. Uh, now let's go cat.exe, and then we will say uh, cat.asm. And it was able to print um, our program, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So that's awesome. Phasm d. Uh, cat asm. So this is this is very good. 
uh, we were able to do exactly what we needed to do. Um, now, the other thing is, is what if we want to use this program anywhere on our machine, right? We want to be able to cat a file out to stood out. Uh, well, what we can do is uh, notice we've got this cat exe program. And also, if we look at our path, uh, uh, we've got a bunch of things in our path. And if you followed uh, from my first uh, first video, you'll have set your path to have C apps. So we have this apps directory. And uh, basically, that's a place where we can put any of our EXEs, and we will be able to call those EXEs from that because it's in our path. So if we say copy cat EXE to, um, let's see, let's go out and out to apps then it will copy cat to apps. And in fact, if we go there, you can see that we now have cat exe in our apps. So if we go back to dev and we go to say uh, sterlength, uh, we can cat our sterlength asm program. And so now we've catted our sterlength asm program. So this is how we can write utilities um, and make ourselves more productive. So we can write utilities, put them in the apps directory, and uh, use those apps over and over again. So that's basically it. Uh, we're getting better at writing uh, similar language programs. And next time, we'll, we'll write something a little bit more complicated. We'll get even more deep into uh, executable programs. And until next time, have a great day.